If you've clicked on this video, then I'm going to assume that you are hitting a slice. It's a horrible shot, it kills your scorecard, but let's not overcomplicate it. In its most basic, simple form, what is a slice? Well, a slice is at the point of contact, set at, at impact, is that the face is excessively open to where the path is traveling. Now, for me as a right-handed golfer, that means the face is pointing excessively to the right of where the path is traveling. Now, that means that I could be swinging out to in, I could be swinging on a pretty neutral path or I can also be swinging in to out and still hit a slice as long as my face is excessively open to that path. Now granted, they might look a little bit different in the air, but they are still gonna move a long way left to right. Now, a lot of people think a slice is caused by coming over the top, and do not get me wrong, that is a huge reason as to why a lot of people slice it. But in today's video, we are gonna tackle the three most common reasons as to why I see people deliver the club face in an excessively open position. Let's get fixing that slice. So the first and by far the most common root cause as to why I see people deliver the club in an excessively open position is a poor grip and more specifically a weak grip. Now before I get into this just note that if you do have a weak grip it doesn't always mean you're going to deliver the club face open. If you have certain wrist conditions where you flex the lead wrist, you will deliver that club face in a square position. Great example of this is Colin Morikawa. Has a weak left hand grip, so he can only see one to two knuckles on his left hand, but he flexes that left hand down a lot, which allows him to deliver the club face square. But what does a weak grip look like for the majority of amateurs that I see on the lesson tee who are struggling with a slice? A weak grip, firstly, when we see them grip it, they will be gripping it somewhere up in the palm. As they then grip it, from the front on view, we will see maybe one to no knuckles visible, and this V on the left hand will point somewhere to the left side of their head. In this position here, if I just bring the club up, relax my arm, and then push it towards the camera, you can see right here how the face is falling to my right in an open position. Again, if I then apply speed, you can see by the time it gets back to impact, that face is pointing to the right. Now, whenever we see the left hand go there, we can see the right hand do a whole load of various different things. But again, a common thing that I see is that they then match the right hand and wrap it all the way over. And again, you can see the V on the right hand is then pointing to the left side of my head again. If I just grip it with my left hand, with my right hand now and extend it towards the camera, you can then see again, the face is falling to my right. Again, if I then apply speed at impact, that's gonna leave the face way open. So you can see both those grips are gonna cause you to deliver the club face in an open position. If your left hand is wrapped all the way around to your left or your right hand is really excessively wrapped over to your left as well. So let's run through some key checkpoints that we need to have with the grip just to make sure we can get it back to a neutral to slightly strong position, which is gonna promote a squarer club face. First things first is, as you probably heard in hundreds of YouTube videos, which is this topic's done a, had a lot of videos done over it, is that you wanna hold the club in the base of your fingers. Now let's just get a little bit more specific. I want you to place the side of the grip in line with the base of your fingers. So I don't want, which I see a lot of golfers do, they go, I wanna grip it in the base of my fingers. So they put the base of their fingers on the bottom of the club. Now, if I actually do that, I close my fingers up, you can see, well, that's a weak grip right there. It's crucial, this is by far the most important part, that you put the base of the fingers on the side of the grip. Because then if you close your fingers up, you now can wrap that meaty part of your hand right over uh, on top of the grip. Now, from the front of you in this position, you can see one, two, maybe three knuckles, two to three knuckles, and that V is pointing now somewhere up to my right collarbone, right ear, somewhere in that region. If I bring the club up in front of me, I relax it out and I push it towards the camera, you can now see the toe is pretty much straight up, or if anything, maybe slightly falling to the left. If it falls slightly to the left, that's an indication maybe you've got a fractionally stronger grip, but if you're slicing, that might be a good little sign for you. Now, in terms of the right hand, what are we looking to do? Well, the second knuckle joint on our hand, we want, on our fingers, we want to place that right on the bottom of the grip. You can see then, if I close my fingers up, how much in the fingers I'm holding that grip. Now, in this position, if I wrap my hand over on top, what you can now see is I've covered my left thumb and that both those Vs are pointing somewhere up to my right ear, right collarbone. So now, if I bring both hands up in front of me, I relax them out, shake them out, push them towards the camera, you can see the toe is returning dead square upright. That now means when I apply speed to this swing and some forces, by the time I get back to impact, you can see I am far more likely to deliver it with a square club face. The second most common root cause that I find that creates a situation at impact where the face returns excessively open to the path is an open club face in the backswing and downswing. So what does that look like? Well, 
When we take it back to the takeaway position, we can see from my perspective, the toe of the club looks like it's at about one to two o'clock on the club face, and that face is pointing more up towards the sky. At the top of the backswing, the toe is pointing more straight down towards the ground, so it's open relative to the left arm. And in the downswing, we can see again, face is pointing up towards the sky, club face around one to two o'clock on that, on that clock face, from my perspective. Unless you have extremely good hand-eye coordination and active forearms, you're more than likely going to return that club face excessively open to the path, which is gonna create a slice. Now, we're gonna fix this two different ways. We're gonna use an internal and an external swing thought. Now these are really, really important that you try both of them because we learn different ways. Some people are gonna find the internal way easier. Some people are gonna find the external way easier. <clears throat> so. Let's start with the external swing thought. The external swing thought is gonna be focusing on where the club face is pointing throughout your swing. And we're gonna focus on three main areas. The first one is the takeaway. If you have an open club face, as we said, the club face is gonna be pointing to the sky. We are going to over-exaggerate this. Why do we over-exaggerate it? Because it helps speed up the learning process. And whenever we start to swing at faster speeds or we swing out on the golf course, we're never gonna exaggerate it as much as we can in our rehearsal swings. So I want you to focus on trying to get that club face pointing straight down towards the ground. Again, massive over-exaggeration, but compared to being here, it's gonna feel completely different and this is what we need. Then from there, at the top of the backswing, rather than the face pointing straight across us, we wanna feel that face point more towards the sky. Again, massive over-exaggeration, but we need to do this right now. And as we come back down in the downswing, club face is again pointing down towards the ground. So, as you can tell, these are completely different on the spectrum compared to where you're used to being, but we have to over-exaggerate these in order to build new movement patterns. The second way we're gonna do it is through an internal swing thought, which is focusing on the right hand. Now, more specifically, where the right palm is pointing. So imagine that right palm is your club face. Wherever the palm points is where the club face is gonna point. So again, if I see that club face going to an open position, the palm is pointing more up towards the sky. At the top of the backswing, palms pointing across me. Downswing, palms pointing up to the sky. Again, over-exaggerations are the key right here. We wanna feel like that right palm points straight down towards the ground. As a result of this, look at the difference in what happens to my shoulder, uh, my shoulder plane, my shoulder tilt, and my right arm. You can see, completely changes position even though I'm just focusing on my right palm. So although we're doing these simple changes, we're gonna be affecting a lot of different things for the good in your swing. So right palm down to the ground, right palm to the sky, right palm down to the ground. Now, depending on which one feels easier, we're now gonna quickly talk about how to practice this. So we've gotta start slow. Why? To give our brain time to learn this motion. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do this step by step and take your time doing this, there's no rush. Take a ball, tee it up, nice short tee, and then grab, say, an eight iron right here. You're gonna do a swing, let's just say you want to focus on your right hand, you prefer the internal swing thought. You're gonna do a swing at 10% speed. This roughly looks at this sort of speed right here. That's the sort of speed we're looking at. And I want you to hit a shot. It'll probably go, what, 10 to 20 yards, if, if that. Now, as you do that, I want you to film your swing or have a buddy or use a mirror or anything like that to give you some sort of feedback as to whether you got that club face in a good position or not. If you did, great, jump up another 10% to 20. Keep jumping up until you find the percentage where it starts to go wrong. So let's just say that percentage is 70%. So 70% is when start, things start to fall apart, we see the club face go a little bit open again. So we know that right now you can't quite do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back a step, we're gonna go to 60%, and we are gonna hit 10 to 15 shots, high quality, with video feedback or mirror feedback or, or a buddy to help you, whatever kind of feedback, and make sure we are doing it right. Once we've done that, we're then gonna jump back to 70 and it's gonna become a lot easier. Then from there, train at 70, slowly jump up to 80. If it's hard, jump back to 70. If that one's hard again, jump back to 60. This is how we're gonna give your brain time to learn this motion. By slowing things down, it gives our brain more time to learn this new motion. If you do that, then you can slowly increase the speed and you're gonna find that you're gonna learn this motion or this new movement pattern way faster. So it doesn't matter if you choose the internal or the external swing thought that is how I want you to practice it and that is root cause number two how to fix an open club face throughout your swing 
The third most common root cause that I see as to why you slice it and leave that face open at impact is because you're not releasing the club. Now, it doesn't matter what player you are, you will release the club a certain amount. Granted, some players do it more, some players do it less, but there are a lot of variables at play when it comes to this. But you are somebody where if you look at your swing and you see in the downswing at shaft parallel, the toe is relatively straight up to the uh, sky or slightly down towards the ground there, you should be in a position to where you can hit a fairly nice straight ball, a draw or a fade, depending on how you release it. But if you are still slicing it from this position, chances are you are just holding onto that club face and you are not releasing it. As a result, on the way through, you will see that face point very much to the sky. You might see a chicken wing, and from there, you are not going to be releasing that club at all. So we need to get you in a position to where we can release the club over. So let's work through some simple drills to help you with this. And whenever we do these drills, we're going to focus on two parts. This shaft parallel in the downswing and shaft parallel in the follow through. This is just going to help us sort of work through this hitting area right here. So what are we looking for? Well, obviously we've just spoken about this position here. We want the shaft to be parallel to the ground, club head to be roughly in line with the hands. It could be slightly behind, slightly level, slightly ahead, depending on what you're trying to do, draws or fades um, or neutral. And I want to see that toe pretty much straight up to the sky or slightly down to the ground. The key is the follow through. I want to be seeing the toe pretty much straight up towards the sky, maybe even rotated slightly down towards the ground, especially if you're somebody who's so used to coming in like this where the face is pointing straight up to the sky. So let's start with the left arm. We're going to isolate each arm first. With the left arm, all I want you to do is just do these little hip high to hip high swings. And as you go through, I want you to feel like you rotate the logo on the back of your left hand down towards the ground on the way through. This is going to start to get that face closing down again, maybe excessively, but for right now we need this because we need to over exaggerate it. So you can see here, I'm rotating it down excessively, but this is going to allow you to learn what it feels like to release the club. And you can see I've gone past this point of toe up to the sky, but again, that's gonna help me learn this new motion. Now, let's put the left hand behind the bat now, and let's do it with the right hand. And again, you wanna feel the same thing, toe passing over the heel, Two ways you can focus on this one. You can focus on either imagining you're shaking hands with somebody, or you can focus on trying to get the right palm a little bit more on top of the club right there. If the right palm's underneath, face is gonna be open. If the right palm's on top, face is gonna come in a little bit more closed. Once you've done that, you can then go, okay, is it easier for me to focus on the left arm or the right arm? Only you can make that decision as we feel things differently. Now, once you've done that, place both hands back on and just work through trying to re-hit that position, toe up to the sky, maybe even over-exaggerate it slightly. Once you've done those, grab a ball and we're just gonna hit some sort of pitch shots this sort of distance, so hip high to hip high, won't go further than 30, 40 yards and we're trying to just hit that good follow through position right there where the toe's either straight up to the sky or rotated slightly over. So let me do that for you right here. So if I look at that flight, it's got maybe a yard of draw on it, really focused on turning through. And I can see in my follow through right there, I had fully released the club into a good position. And now I am gonna start to hit the ball a lot straighter. So root cause number three is you are not releasing the club. Here's a very simple way of learning how to release it by isolating both of the arms and then putting it all together. Remember, start small, build the swings up as that is gonna make it easier and faster for you to learn. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Slicing is such a killer to a lot of people's game, but this is gonna really help you. If you have liked the video, please like and subscribe. And if you do have any video requests, then drop them down in the comments down below. 